think what's so great about this film when you watch it is you're really in the moment all yes. the time. You're in the moment with Killian. You're in the moment with the scientists. You're in the moment with him and Straw. So I just think, um, yeah, I think it helps you kind of just really lock in and feel like you're experiencing something along with a bunch of other people. First of all, guys, amazing job on this film. It is absolutely incredible. I'm sure you've heard that a thousand times, <laughs> but I truly mean it from the bottom of my heart. It's a fantastic film. Um, Jennifer, a first question for you is pacing is essential in this film. And the one thing about this film, I didn't, when I first watched this movie, I didn't realize it was three hours long until after the fact, um, because the pacing in this is perfect. Um, how did you approach the pacing in Oppenheimer to build tension and uh, the emotional resonance that, uh, especially in the scientific discovery and the moral conflict? I think for me as an editor, pacing is kind of a big part of my job. Um, so it's a huge compliment to hear people say that the pacing was uh, worked well for them. Um, but uh, yeah, I think on every movie, I try to make sure the pacing is good. I think on this movie, obviously, um, the challenge was that there's so much information and so many different timelines and things going on. And how do you get that uh, done in three hours and not make it feel rushed or too slow? Um, and I keep going back to, and I mentioned this before, but when I first read the script, um, I kind of had this amazing experience where uh, it felt like five minutes, you know, I just ripped through it. And it kind of read like a thriller and, you know, a courtroom drama sure. and um, kind of a superhero movie. A little bit. It was just so many different things. And I think that while I was working on the film, I just kept going back to wanting the audience to feel the same way I did when I read that script. And that was kind of my end goal of like, get that feeling back of um, how I felt and wanting people to feel that same way. Now, Richard, I'm sure you've seen a ton of the uh, TikToks and stuff where people are, their reactions to, to when the explosion goes off. I was very much the same way where I watched the film. I, I saw the explosion happen and I felt my heart drop. And I was like three rows back because the, the, the sound design was incredible. Um, uh, the sound design is integral to to this film uh, to give it a real big cinematic experience. Um, how did you approach crafting the auditory landscape in Oppenheimer uh, to enhance the storytelling? It was just piece by piece. It's built like building blocks. It's um, it's uh, uh, just beginning beginning uh, on the specific things that Chris wanted me to begin on, which were basically the 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 Oppenheimer's subjective moments. Um, and, uh, and just building out from there. And, um, I did a lot of, uh, research into the period because I wanted to inform myself and I felt like it would be good inspiration for me and I would get good ideas. And, um, so I, I kind of tried to bring as much of that to bear as was appropriate and would, was useful to, uh, create this, you know, to create as rich a soundtrack as we could. We're in so many different locations of the film and we really wanted each one to have its own unique character and um, and there to be a distinct change when you go to a new location. Uh, so and just to, you know, to, to, to uh, um, create the senses of, of place, location, time. Um, and then, yeah, the Trinity test was was uh, was um, was a, a big one, that partly the impression I think the strong impression of the sound came from the long period of quiet before sure. it. So it it uh, it, um, it 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 kind of allowed the audience to experience the visual, then experience the sound, which was sort of like the conclusion of the event. At that point, the the spectators heard the sound. They knew it was over. They knew they succeeded. They knew they hadn't set the atmosphere on fire, and. Um, and it was the, the the jubilation began. Jennifer, you talked you touched on this very a little bit, but this movie does feel like it blends a bunch of different genres to tell this cohesive story. Can you talk about your approach to to kind of playing in that sandbox with these different genres? Yeah, I think uh, playing with the genres in this film is instrumental in terms of the pacing because sure. I feel like if people feel like they're kind of seeing different versions of genres or in and out of um, different movies it makes the three hours go by. And it also just grounds you in kind of what's happening and being in the moment. And I think what's so great about this film when you watch it is you're really in the moment all yes. the time. You're in the moment with Killian. You're in the moment with the scientists. You're in the moment with him and Straw. So I just think, um, yeah, I think it helps you kind of just really lock in and feel like you're experiencing something along with a bunch of other people. Absolutely. That's the perfect word. It it's really feels like a cinematic experience, um, a complete cinematic experience. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Richard, sound, or, uh, Christopher Nolan often uh, uses, he's innovative for using sound. Um, can you discuss any unique sound design techniques or approaches that you used in Oppenheimer? If Chris had his preference, he would only use production sound that was recorded on the day that the film was shot. But that not being possible, we try to make the sound design sound like production sound. That is sound like real sounds that, that, that have the same quality as the production, that sound real, that sound visceral, to give you a sense uh, of, of, uh, of the environment that the characters are in. Um, uh, I often use the analogy of uh, um, uh, the music is, are the sounds that the audience hears and sound design is, are the sounds that the characters hear. That's the world that they inhabit. And so that's the world that I vicariously get to live in, you know, by, by, by creating the world around them sonically. Well, look, you guys did a tremendous job. I'm just going to say, get ready for your Oscars now. I'm, I'm sure they're coming your way. But uh, congratulations to Phil, honestly. It's, it's, it's amazing. So thank, thank you, you very so much. Thank you so much. It's so great to meet you.